So let's go ahead and take this apart. here you got an open hole. Let's go ahead and fill that up. All right so first we plug it in here and then we tuck these cables under here somewhere doesn't really matter too much. This will protrude a little bit from the board out of the board I'm sorry but again that's okay. All right and now we got to screw these guys in. screwdriver. Alright, good to go there. This is going to suck air in and blow it out. It'll blow it out from down here in the bottom, out here. So, alright, and now for this guy right here. Unscrew that. This one is a slightly bit more difficult, but nothing too bad. So this is a little lid. Alright, for this one, we're going to need one of these guys to screw into here. Oh, and I did forget. You're going to want to put this on the bottom of this guy so just glue it right here it's got a little adhesive tape I just took off I don't know if you saw it 3M adhesive tape so I just took off that little piece and now let's go ahead and oops put it on the wrong side that's okay it's still still good for a little while all right Now this is going to be sucking air in through the back. All right, so it's nice and tight. Nice and tight. All right, so we put this guy in, slide it in, and there's gonna be a little groove right here. little groove right here where you slide that cable out it's going to come right here so slide it down all right goes in pretty easy and just attach this cable to the fan header. It might get a little bit in the way of the PCIe 8 pin, but you can wiggle that cable around a little bit so it won't bug you too much. Alright, so right there we've assembled the board. So now, okay, and they're a little sneaky hate when they do this. They're a little sneaky. There's a protective film here to protect against dust over the Asus logo. The problem is, you know, if you overclock and everything, you can melt that. So you want to pull that off before you install the board. You know, melting it's probably not going to do anything too bad, but still, just because. We're going to install this bad boy, the Intel 4790K i7 processor. I'm not going to bore you with the unboxing because I've already done an unboxing and you guys are not, I'm not going to let you guys cheat. You guys got to go watch the unboxing video, also part of Dragon Blogger and should also be uh, part of this review I believe. So first off, I am going to take off 
this guy, this protects these pins. These pins right here. They're very fragile. If you bend one by mistake, you lost the warranty on your board. So, just be careful. So, to open that up, you put your finger right here and you push down lightly on the little arm and you pull out. <laughs> you pull out and you lift. That's going to open this up. So now you push all the way back and then you open that up. Alright, so here on the CPU you can see a little notch right here and a little notch right here. That coincides with the, with the notch on the motherboard. There's one right here and one right here. So, I don't know if you guys saw it, I'll do it again. One right here and one right here. That's to help you install the processor correctly. So let's go ahead, pop that little guy in. All right, and then you just want to wiggle it back and forward, make sure it's good. And then to close this, you just put that latch down. I'm sorry, put the that little piece down. You push this back a little bit. You're going to notice when I did that, and I'll let you hear it again. That little sound that you just heard was these little lips falling down below this little latch, if anything. That little latch is going to go, those lips are going to go through that little latch, securing your CPU in the socket. So then you push this arm down, you push out a little bit, down, and then push in, and now your CPU is locked in there. So, it doesn't take a lot of force, so if it feels really, really difficult, you're probably doing it wrong. I did forget one thing, though. I forgot to screw this down, so put the screw back in, and let's screw it down. Again, that's going to help with vibration. You don't want to hear... That's annoying, the sound, too, that I made. You're going to want to put that, screw that in to reduce vibration. So now let's skip on to the memory. First off, I'm just going to open up these little latches here. And now I'm going to install my RAM. So you'll notice there's a little notch right here. There's also a little notch right here in the memory. That's not going to work. Flip the memory around. It's going to Make sure it's in. When it's in, you push down here on the bottom side. It's going to click. Then you push down here, and that's going to click too. So, let me just show you from here. Click, click, and rinse, wash, and repeat. Click, click, you're good. Last but not least, this is 16 gigs of Patriot Viper memory, DDR3, 1600 mega. I want faster, and no one sent me faster. So, it's good to go there. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and install the heatsink. I've already installed this one a bunch of times. This is the Arctic Cooling Freezer 7 Pro Rev 2. So I'm going to go ahead clamp this guy down. I'm not going to get too detailed with this because every single heatsink is pretty much different. So I'm just going to go ahead and clamp this down. Alright, so that's down. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the pegs in. Alright, so now we clamp these guys down. And 
and last but not least all right so that's clamped down just gonna push down just to make sure all right so now we put in the CPU heatsink again I'm not gonna go into much detail on this because not everybody has the same fan whoops I almost forgot the thermal paste for this I will be using the Arctic MX2 just a little dab that's a little too much and we're going to wipe some of that off Alright, now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and install the heatsink. Nice and tight. Just use this guy. Alright, and last but not least, the fan itself. So just click this guy on. So this would typically come completely surrounded with these pieces of plastic to, to protect your fingers against these fan blades. But in order for, oh look at that, in order for this to fit properly because of the memory, I had to clip these. It's not a big deal. So, I'll go ahead and put this on there. I will say, you have to be a little careful with what heat sink fans you purchase. This board, because you'll see here, because of the The plastic shielding kind of gets in the way you can still fit it you just got to move it a little bit but it works fine so now I'm gonna go ahead and plug this guy in to CPU fan 1 or CPU fan so there we go everything's good and I these are mine I put them on there just so that the cabling looks a little bit nicer. If you're going to do that at home, just make sure these zip ties, you don't cut the ends into the blade because then they're going to be hitting. And of course, it's not going to work very well if you're going to hear clack, 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 really fast. Can't do it that fast. But either way, we're, we're pretty much done with the motherboard. Next not logical step is the case. And that's one of the other parts of the review. So let's jump into that real quick.